Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and I'm here today with you guys to talk about Verdun, specifically to talk about the experience of a new player, that new player who happens to be... Wah. So I've actually owned Verdun since like late 2013, 2014, I, I ended up buying the game while it was still in early access. It didn't actually run that well on my PC at that point in time, I was doing a lot of upgrades, and my GPU power just wasn't there, plus the game was having some optimization issues. So, I put it back on my digital shelf, and I just kind of let it be until this month where I decided to get back into things and give it a proper go over the course of the past two weeks. Now, I've actually seen a lot of Verdun. I've watched a lot of people play it, and I have without a doubt been impressed by what this little indie studio has been able to accomplish. You know, essentially creating a game for a genre that doesn't really exist and making it damn good while they were at it. So I was definitely excited to check out Verdun and actually play it for myself now that I had seen Hey, it's running really well, you know, it's pretty much in, in, in a finished state, they're adding free updates, like this, this is probably the best time to really give Verdun a proper go. And of course, a lot of this was spurred on by the reveal of Battlefield 1's multiplayer. It's very clear to all of us, whether you're a hardcore Battlefield fan, whether you're looking to forward to Battlefield 1 or not, that Battlefield 1 is going to offer a more Hollywood action-oriented take on World War 1. Now, I am 100% okay with that. That's what I expect from Battlefield, and I understand that they have a certain audience that they have to appeal to. Battlefield 1 still looks ridiculously fun, and there's no doubt that I want to play it. But there's definitely a part of me that appreciates a game that can provide a more hardcore, traditional, and authentic World War 1 experience. And there's a lot of you out there who are disappointed by what Battlefield 1 is going to offer, who are looking for that same sort of thing. Now, some of you may or may not know that Verdun does exist, and that is very much a part of this video, is making Verdun very clear and aware to those of you who are like, man, Battlefield 1 isn't really the World War 1 experience that I wanted. So that's a, that's a part of what this video is about, and that's also a part of the timing for this video. The other part of it is the fact that Verdun is currently on sale for 50% off on the Steam Store. So if you wanted to give Verdun a go, now is the best possible time to pick it up. And you get it really cheap, and in my opinion, you've got nothing to lose. But let's move forward and talk about my new player experience with Verdun over the last two weeks. In the past two weeks, I've been able to play the game in my free time, and I've racked up about six to seven hours of play time. So still not that much play time, but this is without a doubt going to let you know what it's like to deal with Verdun as a brand new player. Now, I have to make a personal recommendation. If you watch this video and you decide to give Verdun a go, do yourself a favor, hop on the YouTubes and do some searching for some tutorials to better help you understand the front lines game mode. This is the go-to game mode for Verdun. It's the mode that tries to capture large-scale frontline trench warfare that existed during World War I, and it's really the mode that I recommend the most. It's the mode that I spent most of my time with over the past two weeks. There's some other small modes like bolt action, deathmatch that are fun for honing your bolt action skills, but this is the mode that tries to capture the atmosphere, the scale, and the theme of Battles of World War I. This is what you want to be playing. It is also, as I said, a little bit difficult to understand. So doing yourself that favor, going on YouTube, looking into some tutorials, or at least reading up on how this game mode actually works, will without a doubt remove some of the frustrations that I personally dealt with. And I think it's important to do that because Verdun's slightly masochistic experience, in my opinion. Uh, when you compare it to any other first-person shooter on the market, regardless of theme or setting, it just feels a little bit more hardcore Everything you do has to be a little bit more methodical. You know, you can play a lot of first-person shooters out there that have a tactical experience. I think Insurgency comes to mind where, you know, you need to be patient. You need to make very precise and methodical movements and check all of your corners. Verdun is just like that, except there are no corners to be checked because you're in the middle of a field and there's some trenches over there and there's some trenches over there. And in between those trenches, there's maybe some trees or some bushes and possibly a crashed biplane or a tank and that is it. There are no corners to hide behind. There are no buildings and windows to shoot out of. Verdun is freaking hardcore because you're in the middle of a damn field shooting at someone <laughs> and being shot at. That is what inherently makes Verdun more hardcore than any other first person shooter out there. And that of course is the nature of trench warfare in World War One. And I'm so happy that they captured that. And that I think is what is truly gonna set Verdun apart from Battlefield One. 
Now, to some people, the maps may be more boring or dull because of that, but to me, I appreciate that authenticity when I boot up a game that claims to have that authenticity and is going for that more realism-based gameplay and environmental design. That's what I expect, and Verdun, as I said, definitely delivers, but it makes the gameplay that much more difficult, and that's where the learning curve comes from in Verdun, and that's why I think it's important to understand the game mode so you can focus on dealing with navigating the maps, navigating the trenches, and of course, understanding where you should be going and when you should be doing what. That is the other... The other wall that I had to mantle over while playing Verdun was, you know... Uh, Number one, you're dealing with constant death. You're going to die a lot in Verdun. And even as you get better at the game, even at the five or six hour mark, you're still going to die a lot. That's just that's just Verdun, you know. Be prepared to die. Uh, there, there's nothing you can do about that. Will you die less eventually? Yeah. You'll slowly start to die less and less and less, and you'll start to get more kills in between each of those deaths, but you're going to die in Verdun. Sometimes you just have to make risky maneuvers. Your team has to push out of a trench to rush into the other team's trench because how else are you going to get there? That's why one of the pro tips that the game gives you during one of the loading screens is try pushing into enemy defenses with large groups of players to have a better chance of making it there. What they're actually saying is, well, if 10 of you rush into the same trench, at least two of you will probably make it, the other eight of you of you will die. All of these things I'm saying, though, guys, which may come across as negatives, are part of what make for done grin-inducing. I'm grinning just thinking about it. I've had so many wonderful situations where there, there are those sort of like, hoorah, everybody, okay, out of the trench, ah, the whistle's blowing from the CO, all rush into the other trench, half of us die, one of us makes it in there, throws a grenade, gets killed anyways, that's for done. And trust me, it's actually a lot of fun. As painful as it all might sound, and as frustrating as it might be as a new player, there's a lot of enjoyment to get out of her done. And that's why, despite all these frustrations, I've kept booting the game up. I've kept coming back to it. I found myself sitting there watching new Battlefield 1 gameplay being like, I'm gonna go play for done, you know? <laughs> I want some I want some hardcore bolt action trench warfare. And of course, Verdun isn't just all bolt-action rifles. There are automatic, you know, machine guns and things you're able to get as you level up and are able to spend points to unlock different roles within the different classes. But that's something that I really haven't touched too much on. I've just been purely dedicated to getting my head around the different locations, the game modes, and an understanding of how the game functions within that frontline game mode. And, and that's really where I've left it at. So in a nutshell, when we talk about gameplay, as I said, guys, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult, but I, I don't think it's anything, you know, like you can get past it. I think all too often games like Arma, Verdun, even Insurgency, you know, they get thrown into this list uh, and they get, you know, sort of marked with their own like extra question mark. Like, do you like first person shooters? Do you like World War One? Do you like this? And then there's that last bit like, do you like games that are really freaking ultra hard and dying a lot? This game's so terribly, incredibly difficult, you should probably not play it. You know, that's the question that I think gets thrown at everyone or the say, you know, the sort of terminology, the mentality get, that gets thrown at everyone with these games. But if Verdun's not this impossible game that you'll never learn, are you going to die a lot? Is it a game about kill-death ratios? No, not really. That's what makes it special though, and that's why I think it's worth playing as someone who normally plays Call of Duty or Battlefield, or Insurgency, or Halo, or whatever you play. Verdun is worth playing because it's a completely different experience from those things. It's a game that is going to punish you time and time again, but when it comes time for your reward, when you make that right decision, when your squad pushes into that trench and it performs that perfect flank on that foothold, and everything goes well, the satisfaction will be damn high. Trust me. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about regarding Verdun was how impressed I've become with the visuals. I remember when I first played Verdun, it was a much muddier, much less pretty game. I think they've done an amazing job with the lighting inside of Unity. Some of the shadow effects on the darker maps like you're seeing right now are fantastic. And the first map that you saw, that more open, more green field, uh, was an example of what I think is one of the more beautiful maps, really highlighting a wonderful countryside location. And then when the effects start to pour in, you know, you get the smoke grenade, the effects from artillery, gas grenade getting thrown into the mix. There's some serious atmosphere going on there. This may not be the Frostbite engine, but they've done a damn good job in making this look like a really pretty and really atmospheric game. You definitely feel involved in the environment, involved in the battle, and these darker, more, you know, brutal trench warfare locations where everything has just been decimated by artillery fire, they really capture that. They capture the dreariness and, you know, just a real sense of misery. <laughs> 
And I think that's what they were going for, and they've done a really good job of that. It's not just the environmental and the visual design, though. Verdun has some really great audio design. I, I, I have been pretty impressed. You know, again, you know, when you're looking at something that's coming from an indie dev that doesn't have potentially, you know, a million dollars just to spend on their audio design budget, I think the weapons sound great. You know, there's some wonderful sound for artillery fire. And there's a lot of details in the environment that bring Verdun to life just a little bit more. You know, we talk about the whistle blowing from the CEO. Uh, the agonizing screams of your teammates and enemies as they die from artillery and from, you know, sniper fire and, and you know, poison gas definitely, definitely adds something to the mix. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. My, uh, my, my, my new player experience with Verdun. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot about the game that I still haven't learned. Like I said, I'm still not fully wrapped my head around the progression system and the different roles. And those are all things that you're just going to have to learn that you're going to have to get used to. I did want to close it out by saying that Verdun, so far, at least in my six plus hours, I don't know if I've just been very lucky to have the lottery with great experiences. Um, but the community in Verdun seems to be absolutely fantastic. You know, this is a game that I hopped into, I decided to go into blind, I didn't watch any YouTube videos or tutorials, you know, I'd seen people play the game, but I really didn't understand how the game was supposed to work, um, who I've pretty much answered every question that I've ever asked in game chat. Um, there hasn't been this excessive sense of negativity that you see in a lot of these first person shooters where the community, the hardcore community, seems to spend more time in chat complaining about other games they're not playing than just talking about the game at hand. This happens with Insurgency all the time. When I used to play Insurgency, it was constantly, every time there was a Steam sale especially, oh, the COD kids are here, look at the Battlefield kids came to join us. Like, what, what, what kind of a way is that to welcome people in your community? That does not seem to be the case with Verdun. These are people who like playing Verdun, they potentially love playing Verdun, and they all seem to be more than happy to answer questions for you. I've definitely had the opportunity to play with what seems to be some of the more uh, concrete clans, the real hardcore player bases in Verdun. Um, I think it was some guys with the tag CK at one point I was in a server who were really helpful to me. They answered a lot of my questions. They really helped me get more comfortable with the Frontline's game mode. That's a really great feeling. And when we talk about multiplayer shooter experiences, the community is a huge part of that. Also, I don't know if you guys just saw me and that guy get blasted against the side of that trench wall, but that artillery, but that is definitely part of the reason why I love Verdun. So awesome community, extremely unique environmental, you know, battlefield design, slightly masochistic gameplay and learning curve, but at the end of the day, something that I feel is 100% worth giving it a go. As I said, guys, Verdun is currently 50% off on the Steam Sword. Do yourself a favor, pick it up, grab some friends, play it alone. The game actually does play great alone. A lot of people know what the hell they're doing in this game. Follow suit, be a good soldier, and I guarantee you will find that Verdun is a really fantastic experience that is more than worth your time, just like I did. Now, for those of you guys on Council, if you're not aware or if you're just hearing about Verdun for the first time, Verdun is actually going to be releasing on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 this August 30th. So, just about two months away, and you'll have the opportunity to give Verdun a go for yourself, even if you don't have a PC to play it on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing this. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more Verdun. If Verdun is something you'd like to see me throw onto the channel occasionally, maybe do some live commentaries or some post commentaries with the game, please let me know down in the comment section below. I really like having you guys help me make decisions on certain pieces of content and this game would very much be one of those. If you have any other questions for me regarding my new player experience with Verdun, feel free to throw them down in the comment section below. And if you are a currently active, hardcore, dedicated member of the Verdun community who happens to be watching this video and you'd like to further ask people to come check out Verdun, to persuade them to give Verdun a go, please feel free to mark it away down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.